Today we're going to look at a formula for arithmetic sequences, mainly the explicit formula, so that we can find any term in a sequence. Okay, so let's just get past all this about the toothpicks and things and go straight to it. An explicit formula for a sequence allows you to compute any term in the sequence without computing all the terms before it. So if I ask you for the fifth term in that sequence of numbers, we can find it by using this formula or the 20th term or the 35th term. I don't have to make a list of 35 different terms using the common difference to get to the next one to the next one all 35 times. I can just skip right to it using an explicit formula. Okay. And we can develop the explicit formula by using the first term and the common difference. Okay, I need to know those two things and I can ex develop a formula to go along with it. For example, here, the first term that they're saying is 8. And the second term was 6. More than 8, because the common difference was 6. So 8 and 6 is going to be 14, would be the second term. But all I need is the first term and the common difference. And so if I need to write an expression for the fourth term using A1 and the common difference, it could look something like this, where you start at 8, and then you add 6 for the second term, 6 for the third term, 6 for the fourth term, and there would be the fourth term right there. Okay, that's just a little bit long. And so we want to be able to do this up to 15 term or something like that, but without actually writing 15 terms out, eight plus six plus six plus six plus six plus six plus six plus six, plus six all the way up to 15 of them. We don't want to do that. So we need to shorten it a bit. And so we have the first term and we're going to see how many other terms are we adding. Well, for this one, it's 3. So that's going to be 8 plus 3 times 6. Okay, we're sort of doing reverse distributive property. We're pulling out a common denominator, which is 6. How many of them were there? 3 of them. 6 plus 6 plus 6, that's the same as 3 times 6. Eighteen and six. I mean, sorry. Eighteen and eight is twenty-six. That's going to be the amount for the fourth term. And so, if I want to use that pattern to, to find the fifteenth one, well, I start with eight, and now I need to go up to the fifteenth. That means I need. I have the first one already, so I need actually fourteen sixes to get me up to fifteen. I have one. I need 14 more to get to 15. 14 sixes. And so it looked like that. Okay. And so in order to find any term, I need to be able to turn this into something generic. Something that I can use no matter what term we're looking for and no matter what sequence of numbers I'm looking for. And it looks something like this. The explicit formula is going to be the term I'm looking for in a to sub n, remember this is subscript notation, this is how we specify which term in the sequence we're looking for, a sub n, that means I'm looking for whatever term, variable, okay, whatever one I'm looking for, that's going to be equal to the first term plus, now i got to take that off, whatever terms I'm looking for, Minus the one I already had, okay? I've already got one of them. That's my first term. And so I'm, if I was looking up for 30 of them, well, I just need 29 more. 30 minus 1. 29 more. I already got one of them. That's a, that'll make a total of 30. Times the common difference. Okay, where D is the common difference. D is the slope, the rate of change, the common difference. And that would be my explicit formula. So I can always find whichever term I'm looking for. I need the first term right here. I need one less than that. 
that I'm looking for. One less. The look unknown, I'll say that. Times the common difference or the slope or the ratio. So I need the first one, I need to know one minus the one I'm looking for and what they're going up by, the common difference, the rate of change. That'll be my explicit formula. I can find any one in a sequence if I know these. Okay, I'm just labeling. That's the first one. That's one less than what I'm looking for, my unknown times the common difference. I'll give you an example here. Three, negative three, negative nine, negative 15, negative 21. You're going down by six every time. That's the common difference of negative six. The first term is three. Okay. Which one are we looking for on this one? We're looking for the tenth one. So it's going to be three plus one less than the tenth one, which is nine, minus, times minus six. So let's look at A right here. I'm looking for the 21st one. So I need to know what my first one is, 2 plus, what's my common difference? Looks like it's 4 times what's 1 less than 21, 20. 4 times 20 is 80 plus 2 is 82. 82 is the 21st term. That's an explicit formula. Okay, right here, explicit formula. I have when it tells me the first one, the common difference, which ones I'm looking at. I can find out any one in that sequence. Let's look at B. Negative 0.6, negative 1.0, negative 1.4. That's incre uh, decreasing by negative 0.4. That's going to be my common difference. And so if I'm looking for the 15th one in the sequence, if I had to, I don't want to write out 15 of them. I can just do this. I can just say, what's my first one? Negative 0.6 and add to it, which one I'm looking for, 15th one minus one, because I already got one. So that's really 14 more I need times the common difference of negative 0.4. So I multiply all that together and it would tell me what this one is. And it's okay to use a calculator sometimes, especially when you deal with negatives and fractions and decimals. So let's pull out a calculator. You can use your phone. You can use a Google a calculator. I mean, even if you type it directly into Google, it probably would tell you what the answer was. So 0.6 plus 14 times negative 0.4. Let's see. We need to do our print. We need to do a multiplication first. 14 times 0.4. That's negative. Is negative 5.6. And then we said add 0.6 plus negative 5.6. It's going to be negative 6.2. But same steps every time if you're finding the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. You need to know what you're looking for. You need the first one, the common difference, and then just go backwards. What's one from what you're looking for? So let's go down to, let's look at nine real quick. The first three terms of the arithmetic sequence are listed right here. Determine the common difference, three, and then graph the next three terms. So after 8 is going to be 11. So the fourth one will be 11. The fifth one will be 14. The sixth one will be 17.
just need to graph those three points there. This, the slope is the same as the common difference. Okay, still going to be three. Rise up three over one. Rise over run three. Let's see, 13, the 11th term is 59, the 14th term is 74. We want to find the common difference. Well, we subtract 74 minus 59. That'll give us 15. And then we need to divide it into three because we jumped three different times. 15 divided by three is five. The common difference is going to be five. 59 to 64, 64 to 69, 69 to 74, five every time. And if I wanted to work out what the first one would be, I could just make a sequence going backwards all the way to 1. Or you can solve it using the equation. So we'd say the first one would be equal to, we don't know what the first one is, plus the common difference of 5. times, let's say we're using the 11th one, so 5 times 11 minus 1, which is 10. The 11th term is 59, which is going to equal to x, which is the first one we don't know, plus 50. solve that, 9 would equal x. The first term is going to be 9. Remember, we've substituted x, a1 for x. Well, let's see. Let's find the explicit formula for this one real quick, and then the value. All right? Remember, the explicit formula is always written the same way. It's going to equal the first term plus the common difference, which is 9 on this one, times n minus 1. Well, we're looking for the 30th one, so that'll be 30, a sub 30, equals 2 plus 9 times 30, 29, because I've already got 1 right here, so I only need 29 more to go. Okay. Uh, 9 times 9 is 81, carry the 8, 9 times 2 is 18, plus 8, 261 plus 2, and that'll be 263. The 30th term will equal 263. The main thing, though, is this arithmetic explicit formula. It's always written the same way. The first term plus the common difference times how many more you need taken into account because you've already got the first one. So let's see right there. That's the main arithmetic formula. Usually we'll give it to you on a test or on the no choice. No choice. on the uh, reference sheet. You do the same thing. First term plus the common difference times how many more you need. If you're looking for the 30th one, you need 29 more because you've already got the first one. You look for the 12th one, you need 11 more. You've already got the first one. So that's explicit formulas of arithmetic sequences.